Hi there. I've been working on updating my very small camper van to make room for my new 12 volt compressor fridge. In my last video, I completely remade the kitchen pantry box, and now I have just a few more things to change and to fix up. This first one is an important but less flashy change to raise the height of the kitchen work surface. In a video I made last year, I pointed out that in trying to keep the top of the kitchen below the back window, I forgot that I needed to keep the kitchen shelf at a comfortable working height. So I've spent a couple of years with a kink in my back whenever I'm cooking in the van, and that stops now. The pantry box is now as small as possible while still being able to fit the stove into it. And I really don't want to junk the whole setup, so let's see what I can manage. Just an inch or two can make all the difference in the ergonomics of the counter height. So as a test, I've slid pieces of half inch plywood under all the kitchen boxes. With two pieces, I can almost open the fridge, but I'll need a tiny bit more space for the fridge to open smoothly. There aren't a lot more places I can steal room from, but since every millimeter counts, I'm gonna try trimming the water box so that it fits into the curve of the opening better. If I do that, I think I can swing adding one inch to the height of the kitchen shelf. One of the biggest challenges with building out a minivan is how many weird curves there are in the interior. I built square boxes for the kitchen because that's the easiest shape to make with the wood, but it does leave some wasted space. I'm going to cut away the corner here and then sand it smooth. I think that's as good as I'm going to get it without compromising the corner of the box. Not bad. Now to get the shelf out so I can work on it. It's at times like this I'm glad I designed the whole camper setup to be removable. I'm also glad I only put these legs on with screws. This was my first attempt at using pocket screws. I generally prefer to just put a countersunk screw through from the outside, but in this case I didn't have the access because of the pull-out shelf assembly. I was not impressed with the pocket holes. I found they didn't pull the wood tight, but then again I used regular wood screws and I think that was the problem. Another mistake I made when drilling the holes was to space them evenly across the board. I forgot that I'd cut away sections of the underside to make it less heavy, so half my holes lined up with nothing but air. This time I'm going to mark where the holes are. I think I'm going to make the legs an inch and a half wider. I can't remember why I made the legs less than the width of the kitchen, which could be a bad sign, but if it's a mistake I can always take them off and shorten them again. The outside legs are going to be more of a problem because the second piece acts as a support for the shelf. It would be a waste of a lot of wood to remake them, so instead I'll just add some feet to them. They'll have to follow the shape of the existing leg. I do remember why I did that, as they have to fit inside the plastic edging on the liftgate floor. But it's easy enough to trace them and to make a template to cut the pieces to add on. And I'll make a note of which one is which in case they're not quite the same. I'll cut two pieces each out of half inch plywood and stack them on top of one another. The lines of the plywood would be going the other way, but it should look okay. If I kept them vertical to match, they might split when I drilled the holes for the screws. Okay, it's time to assemble the legs. I have all my pieces cut and glued up, and I'm ready to go. Whoops, the other way. I guess I did glue them the first time, but since the screws didn't cinch down tight, the glue didn't hold well. That's why it was so easy to get the old ones off. I'll clean this up a bit with a chisel so the old glue doesn't get in the way. This time I'm going to use actual pocket hole screws, though I kind of resent having to buy special screws, screws that were hard to find and seemed to only come in boxes of a hundred. I would need one of those four inch driver bits, which I don't have, but I do have my flexible extension, which will do the trick. Well, that works much better with the real pocket screws. I can really feel it pulling the two pieces together snugly. I guess there is something to say for using the recommended screws. I'll have to think of other uses for them now, now that I have a box of a hundred. Looks good. Next we have the feet. Looks kind of good with the lines going the other way. I probably went a bit nuts with the holes, but c'est la vie. I found another chore for those pocket screws. One of the divider pieces on the underside of the branch is broken, and there will be just the thing for fixing it. When I made the bench, I forgot, again with the forgetting, I forgot I needed clearance for opening the underfloor cubbies, so I had to go back in and cut the notches after the bench was assembled, 
It was a hack jaw with a combination of jigsaw and reciprocating saw. So one side was weak from the get-go and eventually broke. So now I've cut a new one on the bandsaw, all sleek and pretty, and I'll use the pocket screws to put it in, because once again I don't have direct access to screw it in from the top. The end pieces I can reach with the nail gun, and it can't hurt to add a few extra nails to the other side too. And back in it goes. Here you can see the shelf where I store the folding table, which is what was stopping me from just screwing the legs in from the top, and the cutout is just enough to let me open the underfloor storage. There is a third panel that can open if I need more access, like to work on the battery, but just to get things in and out of the storage, this is fine. And now to put the kitchen back together. See how the outer legs fit just inside the plastic edging, which helps keep them in place nicely. And yes, I had to take them off and cut away the corners to clear the edging here. As I suspected, there was a reason I had made the inner legs not the full width of the shelf. I'm starting to go nuts with all the details to keep in mind at this point. So now, let's see if I've done my calculations correctly and I can still open the fridge. Not perfect, but pretty close. Short of a complete redesign, which I'm not ready for, this will have to do.